That's fine, as long as some are inside. So I have one. Ralph turned towards the platform. The conch glimmered among the trees, a white blob against the place where the sun would rise. He pushed back. I don't know. He remembered the panic flight down the mountainside. I didn't think we'd ever fight a thing that size, honestly. No. We'd talk, but we wouldn't fight a tiger in time. Even Jack had hunted. Jack stood into the sand. What about my hunters? Simon came stealing out of the shadows by the shelters. Ralph ignored Jack's question. He pointed to the touch of the other above the sea. As long as this light were brave enough, but then, and now that thing squats by the fire as though it didn't want us to be rescued. He was twisting his hands now, unconscious. His voice rose. So we can't have a signal fire. We're beaten. A point of gold appeared above the sea and all at once the sky lighted. What about my hunters? Boys on the sticks. Jack got to his feet. His face was red as he marched away. Piggy put on his one glass and looked around. Now you've done it. You've been rude about his hunters. Oh, shut up. The sound of the inexpertly blown conch interrupted. As though he was serenading the red rising sun, Jack went on blowing till the shelters were astir and the hunters crept to the platform and listened to whisper, as they now so frequently Ralph rose with the eagle, and Piggy and they went to the platform. Talk, said Ralph. Talk, talk, talk. He took the punch from Jack. This meeting, Jack called Ralph. I called you hadn't called it, I should have. You just blew the conch. Well, isn't that... Oh, take it. Go on, talk. Ralph thrust the conch into Jack's arms, then sat down on the trunk. I've called an assembly, said Jack, because of a lot of things. First, you know now, we've seen the beast. We crawled up. We were only a few feet away. The beast sat up and looked at us. I don't know what it does. We don't even know what it is. 
The beast comes out of the sea, out of the dark, trees. Quiet. Shout. You listen. The beast is sitting up there, whatever it is. Perhaps it's waiting, hunting. It's hunting. Hunt. He remembered his age old premise in the forest. Yes, the beast is a hunter. Shut up. The next thing is that we couldn't kill it. And the next thing is that Ralph said, my hunters are no good. I never said that. I've got the conch. Ralph thinks you're cowards running away from the boar and the beast. And that's not all. There was a kind of sigh in the back door, as if everyone knew <coughs> what was coming. Jack's voice went on, tremulous yet determined, pushing against the uncooperative silence. He's like a piggy. He says things like a piggy. He isn't a proper chief. Jack felt a conch to him. He's a coward himself. For a moment he paused and then went on. On top, when Roger and me went on, he stayed back. I went too. After, the two boys glared at each other through squeezes. I went on too, said I. Then I ran away. So did you. Call me a coward then. Jack turned to me. He's not a hunter. He'd never have got us meat. He isn't a prefect, and we don't know anything about him. He just gives orders and expects people to obey for nothing. All this talk. All this talk, shouted Ralph. Talk? Talk? Who wanted it? Who called the meeting? Jack turned red. His chin sunk back. He glowered under his eyebrows. All right, then, he said in terms of deep meaning and menace. All right. He held the conch against his chest with one hand and stabbed the air in his ears. Who thinks Ralph ought to be cheap? He looked expectantly at the boys ranged round who had frozen. Under the palms, there was a deadly silence. Hands up, said Jack Strong. Whoever wants Ralph not to be cheap. <laughs> silence continued, breathless and heavy and full of shame. Slowly, the red drained from Jack's cheeks, then came back with a painful rush. He licked his lips and turned his head at an angle so that his gaze avoided the embarrassment of linking with another's eye. How many things? His voice trailed off. The hands that held the conch shook. He cleared his throat and spoke loudly. All right then. He laid the conch with great care in the grass at his feet. The humiliating tears were running from the corner of each eye. I'm not going to play any longer. Not with you. Most of the boys were looking down. The rats saw it. Jack cleared his throat again. I'm not going to be part of Ralph's lot. He looked along the right hand box, numbering the hunters that had been acquired. I'm going off by myself. He can catch his own pigs. Anyone who wants to hunt, when I do, can come too. He blundered out of the triangle towards the drop into the white sand. Jack? Jack turned and looked back at Ralph. For a moment he paused and then cried out, high pitched, enraged. No! He leapt down from the platform and ran along the beach, paying no heed to the steady fall of his tears. And until he dived into the forest, Ralph watched him. We've been discussing over the past couple of lessons how things are beginning to change within the world of boys, how things are going sour, how what was the case at the beginning of the novel is beginning to fade away. And we've discussed the idea of there being a theme of civilization and anarchy falling away from civilization, not having rules. What I'd like you to do with that extract to discuss who the pastor sitting next to and make some notes underlining as usual, to discuss the way in which the relationship between Jack and Ralph works. How do they talk to each other? How do they talk generally? What do they think?
think about it as a child. Anything you have to say to them about the relationship between the Jack and Ralph, even if it's how it's different to how it was at first, and we're talking about five minutes time. <laughs>
palm round so, so that he can come to and then it's going to like switch up and all of a sudden jump, so the third time he's jumping and runs into it like Yeah. Um,
they're the sort of opposition. So he uses Piggy to insult Ralph, not just by saying um, that Ralph is, is like Piggy as a person, but saying also that they want the same thing. And who likes Piggy? No, do you no, like I'm Piggy? Really? Yeah. I don't like him. Ah. <laughs> you might pity him, right? I, I don't think you would like him. What was the word that we used to describe? Pariah. 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 So Piggy is a pariah and Ralph is like Piggy. Every bit as much full of boring, sensible ideas, full of cowardice, and no one likes you. Then he's... I don't know. It's a hefty, it's a hefty par. It's a hefty par. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, which I'm going to assume means a great and powerful Yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. What else? A couple of other things. When Jack and Piggy first meet each other, they're like really close friends. Jack and Piggy? No, Jack and Ralph, sorry. They get on quite well. And now, as you go further on, Jack's starting to dislike him more and more. And how is that conveyed? Uh, he tries to tell it, but, uh, turn everyone against him. Yeah. And tell them that these are bad ladies. something that leaked into that about the 50-50 thing. What, what is the result of, of this? What does that do? Oh, he twists the story. <coughs> and they go into something going from the beach. Yeah, which links to what we were saying up there. Yeah, what are you talking about? Uh, no, 50-50 chance that Jack takes. Oh yeah, he takes 50-50 chance of power. <laughs> um, Which means uh, when he when he says he wants to be he wants him to be cheap, he knows like there could be a bit of a risk, but he just yeah, wants to fall all around him. Just puts all of his Yes he does. All his eggs in one basket. And to continue using hideous metaphors. He puts all his eggs in one basket, all his cards on the table. <laughs> and when he does that, what, what happens? He gets shot down. He gets shot down. That's yeah, useful. <laughs> and then... He gets hit with another hefty bar. <laughs> <laughs> and then what does he do? He stops he crying. Cries. <laughs> he cries, yes. Oh. He cries. So, because he cries, he shows that he means a lot to him. It does mean a lot to him. Or he could just be like the biggest... Bullies the other boys. But actually, 
just a little more. So I think it's a very interesting point to point out <laughs> is childishness. Um, but just be careful with the essays because you mustn't come across as though you are criticizing them for being childish. Because he is, in fact, a child. Well, you know when he says like that he's going off by himself, he's like, he doesn't like when he doesn't get his own way, so he sort of tries to manipulate people, because he knows if he goes off, people might feel sorry for him, or they might think he's a better hunter, we'll get more food if we go with him. Yeah. So he's trying to manipulate them into like coming off with him and making like two separate groups, rather than being all one group. Yes. Yes, he's trying to be, he's trying to be divisive, isn't he? Pull people apart from one another to divide them from one another. Yes. I think the fact that I'm not going to play in the game, that kind of shows his immaturity. Uh, he still thinks it's a game, he doesn't realise um, yes. how bad the situation really is. So if, if in comparison to Ralph, who treats everything so seriously, and acts in a rather adult fashion and is mature, um, Jack's childishness shows his immaturity now, and that when he doesn't get once, he runs off. So all of this seems very, very different to how things were at the beginning. You know, remember when, uh, in, in chapter three, Jack and Ralph go off exploring the island together with Simon, and they're great friends, and they met with their friends, they're great friends, they mess around, they have fun, they knock one another over, they laugh, they say those weird words, wacko and wizard and things like that, and they push and shove each other. And all of this seems like a, a, almost like a jolly holiday, isn't it? Everyone's having a great time. <coughs> There's a reason that this occurs for company. There's a reason that this occurs. Lord of the Flies was written in response to another novel. And we've talked about this a little bit before. And because you are my experimental class, you're going to be doing some work on this rather sooner than you think. Okay. I'm going to begin as a sign of excitement and joy. Yeah. 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 And it was written in response <laughs> to an earlier novel called uh, Coral Island. And in Coral, Coral Island, some rather familiarly named characters get marooned on a desert island together and have an adventure. It's a very, it's an interesting novel. It's one that I would recommend you reading perhaps a chapter of, but it, only if you like it continuing. It's not one that you have to read in order to understand the prize perfectly. But there it is, uh, The Coral Island by Baron Now look, this is a sort of, Capture, I suppose, of what happens at the beginning. Three boys, a 15 year old, so we're dealing with slightly older kids here. 15 year old Ralph, who oh, oh, oh. is the narrator. 18 year old Jack, oh. and 14 year old Peter Kim Gay. <laughs> yes, he's also Peter just Peter. Gay. Peter Kim is, is a name, it's not very often used, it's a sort of Eastern European name. They are the sole survivors of a shipwreck on the coral reef of a large but uninhabited Polynesian island. Polynesia is that range of islands in Australia. Those of you who watch Summer Hunt's Hard. No. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, they, that's right there. Um, when they arrive, their life on the island is idyllic, perfect, wonderful. Fruits, fish, and wild pigs are plenty of fruits. Familiar, fish, not so much. Wild pigs, definitely. They build a shelter and even construct a small boat. So, Lord of the Flies is written in response to this. It deals with boys going off and being marooned on an island together and getting along rather well. This is a conversation from that novel. Just have a look at it. Speak to us, my dear Ralph. Sorry, Mr. Jack. <laughs> Be better now. I smiled and looked up, saying, Better? Why, what do you mean, Jack? I'm quite well. And what are you shouting for and frightening us in this way? said Peter Kim, smiling through his tears. 
for the poor boy had been really under the impression that I was dying. I now raised myself on my elbow, and putting my hand to my forehead, found that it had been cut pretty severely, and that I had lost a good deal of blood. Come, come, Ralph, said Jack, pressing me gently backward. Lie down, my boy. You're not right yet. Wet your lips with this water. It's cool and clear as crystal. I got it from the spring close at hand. That's not how they sound. <laughs> oh, they're all happy and like mates yeah. with each other. Jack, Jack doesn't care for us. Did you see then that Lord of the Fries is a response to this? Oh, this well, goes off. Well, yeah. this is the question. What would it actually be like? If I deposited you lot on a desert island. Hunger Games. Hunger Games. Apart from the Hunger Games. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> Would you be more like this? Yes. Or more like Lord of the Flies? And isn't that a little bit worrying? I say not all of the Okay. A couple of minutes. Talk to people sitting around you. What do you notice about the way these boys speak to one another? <laughs> Yeah. 
Also, the, the people in this level, they seem a lot older than the people in the world of the They are, certainly. So, yeah. obviously, they'll be behaving So, behave more maturely. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the thing. Um, one of the main issues between Jack and Rath, though, is that he's cheap. Because there are enough people that you need a cheap. But with only three people, there is no cheap, so Jack doesn't have to... But wouldn't you say that in any group of friends, there is always someone who is the lead figure? Mm -hmm. In, in communication studies, we would call that an opinion leader, someone who pushed everyone to behave in a certain way or to do certain things. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, most of the time, it's like Jack's the eldest, and Claire's come after Ralph, who's the middle one. What's the point of being the leader of two people when if those two people could just go against him? Because it's not much of a difference. Whereas this one is more a massive group of people that you can take control of where they don't seem like that's like Ralph instead of like a psychopath you know, where you wanted to but maybe that's in like the thrill of not Ralph Jack where like the thrill of power and stuff where you weren't gaining that over these two boys when you would over a bunch of children. I think the sexual power is important and why we want power why we're interested in it is one of the things that's not of certainly about. And the way it's in which Jack and Ralph both get power and then use it when they have it is very, very different. And I think that's what we're going to come to today. Nikki, what did you want to say? I was just going to say, like, the three of them, you know, you said about the opinion, about the person who makes most of it, but when yeah. the opinion. I think, like, in a friendship group, yeah, that person brings up an opinion, but a lot of people can say, no, I don't want to do this. And, like, yeah, I do want to do that. But because they're little, the, like the little ones in uh, Lord of the Flies, they just kind of go with whoever's doing most sort of thing. So if there would be more arguments in here, it would be more split rather than talking about like what the actual thing is. This is not a terrible thing to say. That hu th this writer's view, Golding's view of humanity, is that if you put them all together with a problem to solve, what they'll actually do is fall out. Rather than have one. I think it was just the way life is. Yeah. Yeah. But isn't that terrible? It's fucking dry. It's Right, you know, um, what was it? The, the gap for me is 67. Everyone kind of did like a team building exercise. And I think it's kind of like to. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, I don't know, but when you, when you work in a group, you can say that people work differently in a group. Kind of thing. Like I talk to Christopher, say differently than I would talk to my mother. Because um, if I talk to my mother, like things that I talk to Christopher about, she would kill me. <laughs> and so then, I will record this information for parents. Yeah. It is for parents. But if there was a, so if this is a different like place that you're talking in, I think that I think that's why people would act differently in groups. Okay, I, I take the point about group versus individual, certainly. Um, in psychology, we call this sort of thing um, social dynamics, the way in which people work in relation to one another. When we are on our own, we do behave differently to how we are in group. We talked about that before in um, but that's what it's called, social dynamics. Okay. Um, I, I just thought that, like, because there are so many people in Lord of the Flies, like, you could split off into groups and you'd still be fine. The fact that there's only three of them, so if they suddenly had an argument, they went off. They would be very much on They would be on their own, and they can't do anything about that. So, so they may be trying to, you know, it, yes. that could be a thing of they need each other to survive, and that's why they're being so nice to each other. But then, even though that you're right, it's more likely that they'd stay together like that. But don't you think that the boys in Lord of the Flies need each other? Yeah. No, all of them. The 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 Discuss. Talk about the idea of the boys in the I'm <laughs> 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 
Ralph does not have to be his intelligence. 